Good morning. Good morning. So glad to have everybody here today. We have just a few announcements before we begin our service. Um, oh, where did I begin? It's a good thing. The uh, food here. We're collecting um, hamburger helper and such this month. And um, I'm so impressed with our church. We're doing such a great job. As of last Friday, we had 308 boxes already. So we collect these for good. It's not first. Um, every month we select an item and the whole church works together you know, to build up as many as we can. And um, we had bags coming in this morning, so I think we're way beyond that amount. And I wasn't sure if I should bring this up. Let me just bring it up and ask, and then I'll ask your forgiveness if I should. Anyway, the chapel has brought in 164 boxes, and the sanctuary has brought in 144. I, I don't want us to get competitive. Yeah, I do. Let's go ahead and get competitive. So, but, uh, but please, uh, that helps so much if you only knew. I ask people, you know, when they talk about, you know, helping the people that are hungry and such, I always just ask them, have you ever been hungry? Have you ever sat down at the table and you weren't sure if there was anything going to go on the table? If you've ever been there, you understand what this is about. So there's people all around our community here. Um, they're called the underemployed. You may have heard that. You'll never hear a politician use that term, though, because it's an election year for some of them. So they like to ignore that. Uh, but there's a lot of people all around, right here, right in our county, right in our area here, uh, that aren't sure if they're going to have every meal covered this coming week. That's what this goes to. It goes immediately to Valley View Food Pantry, and they begin dispersing it to people that are in need. Um, so great work, church. Uh, the dinner for six groups, we uh, have started hopefully this week. Ours is going to start this coming week. Uh, captains of the dinner for six groups, call your people. Get that first meeting going, ready to get started. Uh, several groups started this week and said they had a great time. And I'll remind the captains, the hosts, when it gets about 7 or 8 o'clock, keep those people out of your house. Don't let them camp out there. You know, keep, things, keep things going. Have a good time. Uh, but the dinner for six is great. It's good fellowship time. And um, tomorrow evening, we're having a St. Patrick's Day dinner. Do we have any Irish here? If you're an American, you got to have Irish blood somewhere. Or go to my tie I've got here. Uh, my grandmother's maiden name was O. Patrick. How about that for Irish of Irish? So I've got a little Irish blood in me. But tomorrow evening we're having that. Um, everything's ready to go. We do need you to sign up just to make sure we have enough of everything. So let us know that you're coming uh, to make sure we have things covered. We have uh, musical entertainment coming with some Celtic music. Sharon, Sharon her group's going to be playing some Irish music. So start practicing that Irish accent. And come on, lads and lassies. Come tomorrow night. Um, also, the uh, Coffee Fellowship, we're starting something a little new. Let me try to explain a little here. We've had it in our newsletter and other places. Uh, we did not wake up one morning and say, you know, those friendship circles are working too good. I think we'll just stop them right now. That was never the motivation. We came to April and found that there was nobody to do it anymore. Things had just kind of ran to a conclusion. So we have to start a new system, try to get things going again. So it'll be a little different. We're trying to get sign-ups for that. If you can help, we have a, a sign-up sheet listing the details of what needs to be done. So if you're in the 1030 service, help with the 1030 service part. Put out coffee, water, tea, and sugar and such. We think it'll probably take about 15 minutes, so you know, not too long. But we do need people to help. So you know, just put in your time, and uh, that would be great. Uh, one little difference there, you're going to have to start pouring your own coffee. Okay, is this okay? I, I think we're already doing that for a lot of people. I think we'll get by that. I think we'll be good to go. So it's a little different. I know it's a new idea, so we have to work <coughs> through that. But please, give it time. We're looking for the best ideas we can find, so we need your help. I believe if we pull together as a church family, do you hear me here? All together as one. Supporting a common theme, a common goal, great things can happen. We can get through that. I uh, just point to the food we collect every month. When we're united, some good things can happen. So uh, we'll get through that church. Thank you very much. And uh, we have visitors with us this morning. And some returning, but I'll go ahead and announce you again. Bob and Shirley Downs, we're glad to have you back with us.
I just want to give you a chance for people to clap for you. Doesn't that feel good? You know, just show up and they clap. And then Ken and Kathy Lawley. Here we go. Ken and Kathy, glad to have you with us. And Esther and Earl Asher. That's right here in the same pew. There we go. <laughs> Where are you guys from? Where are you from? Missouri. Oh, yeah. And I know you're from Missouri because you pronounced it like you're from Missouri. So there we go. <laughs> we have a few people from Missouri. And we have a few more people from Missouri, too. We have both states <laughs> represented here. Oh, yeah. And uh, Gene, it's great to see you back here. Oh, no, you did. <laughs> and, and Sandy, glad you made it, too. Thank you. Okay, good. So glad you made it with us today. Um, I almost forgot to mention. Um, see, last Sunday we started distributing the uh, Lenten coins, and um, we've used those for a few years. That has been a very positive surprise. People have said they really appreciate that. You take these, put them on your keychain, your golf bag, whatever. And um, it's just that reminder. You pull it out, that reminds you of what's really important, your priorities. Um, if you did not get yours, if you have a friend or family that you think would like one, they're in this uh, basket right here. Um, help yourself. These baskets will be on both communion tables in our church through Easter. Um, so just come up and help yourself. Grab an extra one or two, and that's what they're there for. We ordered extras. Um, so please take advantage of that. Okay, I think I've got things covered. Are there any other announcements? I know Thursday's the board meeting. Board members, you have packets to pick up to get ready for the meeting. And if there are no others, let's take a moment. Steve, come and laugh with us on Tuesday. Come and laugh with us on Tuesday. Laugh with you. Okay. I thought you said laugh at us. on. <laughs> yes, we have the healing and laughter workshop. And uh, that's always a good time. So come on out. You'll find the details in your bulletin to, uh, to talk about that. Jan, Dr. Jan um, Ferguson takes care of that. So good things. Okay, let's take a moment. I know we had a lot of announcements. Just breathe a little. Get some of the tension out. We've come here to worship God. Do you understand what an amazing privilege that is? To come into the presence of God and lift worship up to our Lord. Don't let it be an accident. Don't just stumble into this time but be very intentional with what God has provided. Let's prepare to worship God. Please stand as you're able and join in our call to worship. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm and do not let yourself be burdened in the hand by the yokes of slavery. O God, creator and sustainer of our universe, we freely and gratefully come before you in prayer and thanksgiving for your infinite love toward all creation. We humbly enter your house with praise for your ultimate goodness and love. With penitent hearts, we worship you, praying that we may develop those human virtues of caring, compassion, and justice that reflect the character of your son, Jesus, 
the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I am the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of praise. I'd like to teach you a new chorus before we sing it. If you look on your um, insert, we're going to be singing Amazing Grace. And there is a chorus between verses 2 and 3 and at the end of 4. And I'd like to sing it for you so that you can sing along with me. Okay. Let's see, I have to. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns. Amazing love, amazing grace. Let's try it once. Amazing Thank you. 
Good morning. Good to see everyone here today when you could be somewhere else. We are taking attendance. I got two points I want to make today. First comes from the scripture of Matthew. I have 30 seconds, uh, Pastor Steve told me. And I said, we, a minister can't even take an offering in 30 seconds. So I want you to listen really close because we're going by this fairly fast. On Matthew 8, 23rd and 27th verse, when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he awoke. Save us, Lord, for we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O men of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a, a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this that even the wind and the seas obey him? I guess the question would be, What's stronger than fear? Here you had professional fishermen out on this boat, and they had not seen anything like it. They were afraid. And yet amidst of all the storms that mankind was afraid of, Jesus slept until he was awoken. Lord, they cried out, save us. He calmed the sea, and he said, why are you afraid, O oh, men of little faith? Jesus' sleeping presence on the storm tossed sea revealed that the sleeping faith of his disciples would not be ignited until something came up that threatened their lives. They were asleep to Christ, even while he was in their presence. Their hour of need. In our hour of need, Christ is always with us. Do you recognize the presence of the Lord when He is with you? Do you take all things to Christ? When you start to read the Bible, do you pray that God open up those scriptures to me so I might understand what my role in this thing called human life is? We have the storms of adversary, sorrow, temptation. Whatever the counter is that you face, take it to God. Now, my second thing is the communion table. There are many religious rituals within the church, all churches. This is a religious ritual which we do every Sunday. Because as often as we are gathered in his name, we do this. I want you to turn it from a ritual, uh, religious ritual into a spiritual encounter with God. Take this time as you take the bread that is being offered to you and realize that a man died for you. And as you take the cup and, take a, and partake of it, remember full heartedly that he died upon a cross. His blood flowed for you. Make it a spiritual encounter with God. Allow him to come into your heart, into your mind, into your soul, so that once we leave here today, we don't forget we don't forget that we're not alone. And all fears that we face, like the disciples that night on that boat, we can overcome because God, through Jesus Christ, is with us. Let us prepare our hearts, our minds, and our bodies for that time together with Christ.
such an intimate time with Jesus and his disciples there in the upper room. It was this time that he was, Jesus was trying to explain to his disciples once more before he would be betrayed, before he would be headed to the cross and suffering for our atonement. He taught his disciples by breaking bread at the table and then giving it to them and teaching us that this broken loaf has an important lesson for it represents his own body that is broken there upon the cross. And Jesus took a cup of the fruit of the vine and he gave thanks for it. And he teaches us that this cup represents his own blood that is shed on our behalf. Jesus gives his body, he gives his blood, he gives his life that we might have life, that we might have joyful life in this world, that we might have the hope of everlasting life. As we come to partake of these emblems this morning, let our hearts be open that we might discern the very presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this table. We say, dear Jesus, thank you so much for this gift. Personally giving all for us, giving us your broken body, giving us your shed blood, that we might, through you, receive this nourishment, which leads to eternal life with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your all. In your name we pray, amen.
A few decades back, there was a real business classic that made the rounds, and I think it was required reading of anyone in the field of business, Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson. Uh, any Spencer Johnson fans here? I, we had a few at the first service as well. It's an interesting book. It's really a parable, just a pure metaphor. So you have to be very creative in reading the book. It's about two mice in a laboratory experiment. Their names are Hem and Haw. Does that give you a clue where the storyline is moving along here? And one day they come upon a realization that traumatizes their world. The cheese is gone. It's not where it's always been. Every day it's been in this spot, now it's not there. And so they embark upon this great adventure of where they're going to find new cheese, where they're going to find different food, how are they going to live, how are they going to survive. And they go through many experiences. And the book is very valuable in that regard, just to get us thinking about life and our priorities. And one of the questions that's asked of the two mice that is kind of a haunting question. I've talked with friends and others that said that question really kept them up late at night sometimes. And the question is this, what would you do if you were not afraid? Okay, think of that one. What would you do if you were not afraid? If you didn't have the inhibitions, if you didn't have fears that held you back and kept you down, but you had freedom, what would you do? What would you do different? I believe we have the opportunity for offering. It's one of those times that that question comes right at us. What would you do to make a mark in this world? What would you do for something significant? What would you do to benefit the kingdom of God? In our offering, we have just that opportunity to do something that matters, to do something that gets heaven excited, to do something that gets God's attention. It's our opportunity. Let us not overlook it and let us have the courage and not be afraid to step out a little bit in faith sometimes. Let's collect our offering this morning from a strong sense of faith.
us pray. Dear Lord, as we bring our tithes and offerings to thee this morning, we pray that each gift has been freely given, for freely we have received these gifts from you. You have showered us with your blessings, and we should give generously to others our time, our love, and our possessions. We pray that these gifts will be used to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Come to our time of prayer. I'd like to update you on uh, some of our prayer needs that we have. Uh, Larry Allen uh, made it to the Choice Care Facility over in Sun City West. And it's a bit of a long story, but his children see that's an incredible blessing uh, that he was able to get those things worked out. And uh, that was God's intervention to step in at key times because uh, Larry was a veteran of World War II in the uh, Pacific Ocean uh, theater of war. And... Um, Oh boy, where do I even begin? But a number of incidents happened and he was able to move into this care facility uh, without cost. And the family said they were very pressed for expenses with this and it was very hard. Uh, but now that everything's taken care of, uh, Larry's moved in, gotten settled, so please keep him in your prayers. And uh, Jean Toller, uh, misinformation, she's not home, she's at church. So if you just write that in there, right here. <laughs> And uh, Joan Barber and her husband will keep them in our prayers thereabouts. And um, I received this information this morning. I was looking. Carolyn's always sitting here. Uh, Carolyn J.T. Williams. Uh, Carolyn had went in the hospital. She's home, though, right, Ann? Um, she wasn't in the hospital. She went to a patient at Excuse me. Okay. Anyway, um, very dizzy, <coughs> just extremely dizzy. And uh, so they're still trying to work things out. That's why they're not here this morning. And um, which makes it complicated, uh, those that don't know, JT, her husband, is blind. So she's the one that leads him and takes care of him. So uh, that makes it complicated. So if you'd please make a note on that one. And also we have the carnations. We needed three. We only had two here. Uh, but we had three deaths this past week. So we're very sad about this. Esther Uring, uh, we had prayed for her last week. And um, she passed away. And I talked to her son, Wayne, looking at Irene, and um, he was just very pressed with everything. We're going to try to have her service sometime in mid-April, uh, so we'll let you know. We'll have that marked when the date is set. And also, Richard Ferris uh, passed away yesterday. That um, was a great shock to us. That's why Carol's not here this morning. Um, his service is scheduled for Wednesday at 2 o'clock, so please make note of that. Richard Ferris passed away yesterday. And um, also, I got this call just last night. Uh, Ruby Lammers uh, passed away uh, yesterday. And uh, Ruby's not been in our church worship for a while. Uh, Ruby is a problem with sight, near blind. Uh, she was very regular at the Monday morning service group. And um, it seemed like everybody I talked to her said, that's the woman that made the Afghans, right? And that's where her daughter introduced herself. Ruby, you know, the woman that made the Afghans. So... That's a good legacy, the woman that's always caring about other people. Um, anyway, this happened just last night, and uh, service is pending. We'll let you know. We'll try to get information out as we find out this information. So we have some um, heartache in our church we're concerned about. We want to take just a moment and just be still and just be quiet before God and just have conversation with God. Lift up concerns that you have. Lift up your joys. This is an opportunity just to talk to God. And just share within your heart. Let's be still before God.
Oh Lord, these moments we spend with you are so important. To be still before you. This is where we belong. This is where we need to be, Lord. Always connected so closely with you. To take the time to step out of our schedules even. And just to be quiet with you. And just to focus upon your goodness, upon your glory. And to know your care. Lord, here is where we gain our strength. This is where we gain our healing. We gain wisdom, perspective, courage. All these things we need to face life head on, Lord. We find from you. Your heart is such a wonderful reserve of energy when ours runs out. And how you give us that resolve, that courage to proceed, to always stay the course even when things might get a little rocky. But always following after you and your spirit leading us on. Father, we lift up to you the concerns we have. Father, thank you so much for being with Larry Allen. And it's amazing, Lord, the way you work that out to get him into a center where it would not be a great financial burden upon his family and they could be able to afford to work things out well. We also pray they'd be, continue to be with Gene Toller and Joan Barber. We'd lift up to also Carolyn Williams and just the situation she's going through right now, the, the dizziness. And Father, we do not know the details and the doctors may not have figured this all out yet. But Lord, we know that you do. You know all things. Lord, be with Carolyn. Be with JT. Give them a confidence in their heart to know that you're taking care of them and you will lead them through this time. Lord, we lift up to you the families of Esther Uring, the families of Richard Ferris, be with Carol and be with Richard's children. We also pray you be with the family of Ruby Lammers. Lord, these that have passed on from us and have passed on to you, welcome your children home, O oh God. May it be an encouragement to us that our faith always remains strong in you, that all fears might melt away in, in your midst, in your care. Lord, how we need you. How we need to know that touch of your hand upon our lives. To know that you are there. And to know that you care intimately about us. Lord, teach us more of your ways as we seek to follow you. And we pray all of this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.